وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نهورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear viewers, welcome again to a new episode of The Prophet's Prayer uh, this episode and perhaps the next one is going to be about how to develop khushu'a in the salah. Allah the Almighty began Surah Al-Mu'minun by saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qad aflah al-mu'minun. Al-lazina hum fi salatihim khashi'un. And the meaning of these two verses that successful indeed are the believers the very first quality of those successful believers is that they are khashi'un in their prayers so what is the definition of khushu'a? khushu'a is a state of submissiveness tranquility, hope and fear all of that while a person is standing before Allah the Almighty in his or her salah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised us to seek help in the salah when he says وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبِرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ and seek help in patience and in the performance of the prayers and the performance of as-salah is a bit difficult but for the believers who are khashi'un it's easy and affordable why? because they do not just take it as duty they enjoy their prayers the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one hadith said وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ that the peace of my eye and the comfort of my mind is been put in the position of salah while I'm praying, I enjoy. I have a peace of mind. The Prophet وسلم, whenever he would command Bilal to establish the salah by calling iqama, he would say instead, Arihna bussalati ya Bilal. Let's have some comfort in offering the salah, O oh Bilal. A person who does not have khushu in his salah does not enjoy it and thinks it's a heavy task on him. The Prophet said in one hadith that Allah had prescribed five daily prayers to be offered during the day and the night on each day. That one who would perform a proper wudu and perfects the ruku' in his salah and have khushu' he will have a promise from Allah that he would forgive him his sins. And one who does not do so, even if he just does the physical activities of the salah, would not have such a promise. So he would be up to Allah. He might forgive him or he might punish him. In another hadith, emphasizing on the importance and the virtues of having khushu'a while one is praying, the Prophet ﷺ said that if one perfects his wudu and offers two rakas, only two rak'ahs. يُقْبِلُ فِيهِمَا عَلَى اللَّهِ بِقَلْبِهِ وَوَجْهِهِ Then he faces Allah not only by his face, but by his heart as well. لَا يُحَدِّثُ فِيهِمَا نَفْسَهِ And he does not think while he's praying these two rak'ahs about anything else other than his salah and Allah. 
What's going to happen to him? إِلَّا غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ ذَنْبَهُ Allah will forgive him on his sins for two rakahs. When the person is focusing heart and mind in his salah, in what Allah commanded him to recite and their meanings, Allah would forgive him his sins. And in another narration, إِلَّا وَجَبَتْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ But paradise will be guaranteed for this person. I want you to imagine the prayers like a charger. And the heart is like the battery. We charge this heart constantly, five times a day, with the power of Iman. The prayer increases the level of Iman in one's heart. Whenever any person is attending the prayer, he's coming with loads of sins. He supposed after he finishes his or her prayer to get rid of all of that. Because this prayer will be an expiation for whatever sins were committed before this salah. But all, if all of that doesn't happen, then the person is just doing some physical exercise, not enjoying his prayer. And actually, this has been a complaint of many people. They say, Sheikh, I do not enjoy my prayer. I cannot focus on my prayer. I do not know what I'm reciting. Once I say, Allahu Akbar, I get to remember everything that I have forgotten. I think about everything and anything, but not the prayer. This is a common complaint. Now, we're trying to learn how can we develop khushu'ah in the salah. But before, you have to understand that the master of this entire ceremony is the heart. This organ which controls all the body parts in that regard. If the heart tranquils and acquires khushu'ah, that's going to reflect on the rest of the body parts. So that the person would not be worried about the time, would not keep constantly looking at his watch while he's praying, or fixing his clothes, or doing anything that would distract his attention from a salah. So we will divide this concept of how can a person gain khushu'a and develop tranquility in the salah into two main categories. The first one, the factors which will make a person develop khushu'a. What do I need to do to be khasha in my salah, to enjoy my salah? The second category is warding off the factors of distraction. What do I need to make sure that I should remove before and while I'm praying so that I would gain khushu'a in the salah? Concerning the factors which would increase khushu'ah in the salah, they do not begin only in the salah. No, way before that. You know, when you perfect your wudu, that helps you to gain khushu'ah for salah. When you hear the call to prayer, the adhan, and you repeat after the mu'adhan, then you say the dua as the Prophet wasallam taught us, that prepares your heart and mind. You're mentally prepared to be in the company of Allah, the Almighty. The Prophet ﷺ commanded us that. If you ever hear the Mu'azzin, then repeat after him. Say as he says. And after he finishes, then recite the supplication. Allahumma rabba hadihi al-da'wati al-tam wa salat al-qa'imah ati muhammadan al-wasila wa al وبعثه اللهم مقام المحمود الذي وعدته. When you say so, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says, his intercession on the day of judgment will be guaranteed for you. Then send the peace and salutation upon Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. All of that, this process is to prepare you mentally to enter the salah, to be in the company of Allah the Almighty, to converse with him. Taking all the measures which we studied before of acquiring tranquility, the Prophet ﷺ, when he would make ruku' until each bone would settle and go back and return to its proper position. When he would make sujood, 
he would be in resting position until each bone would return back to its proper position and will be in a state of tranquility and he would rest. Why hurry? You are in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, 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 the scholars said that tranquility is a requirement for the validity of the salah. And without it, a salah is invalid. Many of them said so. Well, once you enter the salah, you have to understand that every word you're reciting, whether it's a supplication, it's a takbir, whether it's a recitation of the Qur'an, you're conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to mean what you're saying. You have to understand their meaning. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once stood all night praying. And Bilal ibn Rabah, may Allah be pleased with him, came to wake him, to wake him up as regular for Salatul Fajr. But he found the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was already up. He did not actually sleep. He was praying. And he found the Prophet ﷺ was crying. His tears wet his beard, wet his clothes, and wet the floor beneath him. Bilal ibn Rabah said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, were you crying? Why Allah have forgiven you all your sins? He said, Why not Bilal? Shall I not be a thankful servant to Allah? O oh, Bilal, I have received certain ayat tonight woe woe to one who would read them and does not reflect upon them the ayat of surah al imran inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilaf al layl wan nahar la ayat li uli al albab الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار. We have to enjoy our recitation. We have to understand what we're conversing with Allah with. Even if it is just a little surah, I'm talking about size wise, because the entire Quran is great. As a matter of fact, some of the companions and the predecessors would just recite Qul huwa Allahu Ahad as we said before the Prophet Sallallahu said that it's equal to one third of the entire Quran as long as you understand the meaning of what you're reciting so you have to make an effort to ponder and reflect upon your recitation in the Quran whether it is a Fatiha or supplication or reciting in a Surah or even making Dua while you are in the position of sujood. May Allah help us to develop khushu'a in our salah and accept all of that from us. Stay tuned. We'll continue insha'Allah with the developing of khushu'a next episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.